Hello students, welcome back. This is class 7 science. Chapter number 3, fiber to fabric. It's lecture number 3. In this video, we will be learning about the another animal origin fiber. It is silk. Then we will be covering the life history of silk moth and finally the journey from cocoon to silk let us first of all know what is silk silk commonly known as reshim is also an example of animal fiber silk fibers are obtained from the cocoon of silk moth or commonly known as silk worm. Do you know the rearing of silk moths for obtaining silk is called sericulture? The silk yarn or thread is obtained from the cocoon of the silk moth. There is a variety of silk moths which look very different from one another and the silk yarn they yield is different in texture. It may be coarse, smooth or shiny. Thus, tesser silk, moga silk, kosa silk, etc. are obtained from cocoons spun by different types of moths. The most common silk moth is the mulberry silk moth. The silk fiber from the cocoon of this moth is soft, lustrous and elastic and can be dyed in beautiful colors. Here the word lustrous means having shine. Students, before looking at the life cycle of silk moth in detail, let us first look at the diagrammatic representation of the same. In this life cycle, Four major steps are given, starting from the adult moth. Female moth lays many tiny eggs. Then comes larva. Caterpillars feed on mulberry leaves for about three to four weeks. Each of them then spins a cocoon around itself. After that comes the cocoon. The caterpillar changes into a pupa inside the cocoon and finally we can again get the adult moth. Let us now look at the life cycle of a silk moth. The female silk moth lays hundreds of tiny eggs on the mulberry leaves. The larvae that hatch of the eggs are called caterpillars or silk worm. These caterpillars feed on mulberry leaves voraciously and grow in size. Let me tell you larvae is the plural of larva and voraciously means enormously. Moving further, when a caterpillar is ready to enter the pupil stage, it stops feeding and then it swings its head from side to side in the form of the figure of eight. During these movements of the head, the caterpillar secretes fiber from its 
salivary gland. This fiber is made up of fibroin protein which hardens on exposure to air and forms a cover around the pupa. This cover is called cocoon. Cocoon is ball shaped and is formed of silk fiber. Further development of silk moth continues inside the cocoon. At the end of pupil stage, silk moth cuts the silken fiber of the cocoon and the young moth flies out. We have understood the life cycle of a silk worm theoretically. Now, let us look at the diagrammatic representation of the same. Starting from, the female moth lays many tiny eggs. Then, a tiny black caterpillar hatches out of its egg. After that, the caterpillar eats mulberry leaves and grows bigger and bigger. I hope you all are tracing down the track in the clockwise direction. After that, the caterpillar spins a cocoon of silk thread around itself. Then we reaches at a stage called pupa. Inside the cocoon, the caterpillar changes into a pupa. The people who are involved in the sericulture business unwind the silk thread from the cocoon to weave into silk cloth. Otherwise, the pupa changes into a moth. The moth comes out of the cocoon. Gradually, with the time, it turns adult. The adult moths mate with each other and the cycle repeats itself once again. Here, we have a journey from cocoon to silk. Let's learn about it. For obtaining silk, moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get silk threads. The breeding and management of silk moth for the production of silk involve the following steps. Rearing Silk Worms a female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time. The eggs are stored carefully on strips of cloth or paper and sold to silkworm farmers. The farmers keep eggs under hygienic conditions and under suitable conditions of temperature and humidity. The eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature for the larvae to hatch from eggs. This is done when mulberry trees bear a fresh crop of leaves. The larvae called caterpillars or silkworms eat day and night and increase enormously in size. The worms are kept in clean bamboo trays along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves. After 25 to 30 days, the caterpillars 
stop eating and move to a tiny chamber of bamboo in the tray to spin cocoons. Small racks or twigs may be provided in the tray to which cocoons get attached. The caterpillar or silkworm spins the cocoon inside which develops the silk moth. Let us now summarize rearing silkworms through diagram. Starting from A. Female silkworm moth with eggs. Then comes B. Mulberry tree. After that C. Larva, caterpillar or silkworm feeding on mulberry leaves. Once all these processes are done, finally we get cocoons which is represented by D. After that, there comes processing silk. A pile of cocoons is used for obtaining silk fibers. The cocoons are kept under the sun or boiled or exposed to steam. The silk fibers separate out. In this picture, boiling of cocoons is shown. Here, the process of taking out threads from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk. In the previous slide, we learned what is reeling. Now, students, let me tell you, reeling is done in special machines, which unwind the threads or fibers of silk from the cocoon. Silk fibers are then spun into silk threads, which are woven into silk cloth by weavers. At the end, let us summarize the processing of silk. The healthiest moth are chosen for breeding and laying the eggs. After that, we all know the larvae that emerge once the eggs hatch are feed mulberry leaves. They continue feeding for 20 to 35 days. When the silkworm is about 35 days old, it starts spinning a cocoon around itself. This process takes about 3 to 7 days to complete. As the direction of arrow is pointing upward, the next step is the pupae inside the cocoons are killed by putting the cocoons in hot water which kills the worms as well as loosens the filament. Students, hear the word pupae as the plural of pupa. Once this step is done, one end of the silk thread is then passed through an eyelet and the thread reeled onto the wheel. Finally, Single filaments are washed, dried and twisted to form yarn. The texture of the fabric depends on the manner of twisting. Students, this is homework time. These 
questions are based on the topics we just discussed in lecture number 3. Multiple choice questions. Question number 1. Silk fibers are formed of Option A. Keratin protein Option B. Fibroin protein Option C. Elastin protein Option D. Collagen protein Question number 2 The silk worm is Number 1. A caterpillar Number 2. A larva Choose the correct option Option A Point number 1 Option B, point number 2. Option C, both 1 and 2. Option D, neither 1 nor 2. Question number 3. It is the fill in the blank question. Silk is obtained from dash of silk moth. Question number 4. Out of the following, which are the two terms related to silk production? Sericulture, Floriculture, Moriculture, Epiculture, and Sylvie culture. To answer this question, an hint is given to you. Number one, silk production involves cultivation of mulberry leaves and rearing silk worms. Scientific name of mulberry is Morris Alba. Question number five. Match the words of column 1 with those given in column 2. Column 1 Number 1. Scoring Number 2. Mulberry leaves Number 3. Yak Number 4. Cocoon Column 2. A. Yields silk fibers B. Wool yielding animal C. Food of silkworm D. Cleaning sheared skin Question number 6 